Data? Look at this. Data. What? My name. It is pronounced Data. Oh? You called me Data. <laughs> What's the difference? One is my name. The other is not. And welcome to season two of Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. And just before we get into the episode here, I just want to give a content warning for discussions of sexual assault and rape. It's a very integral part of the episode and the plot, so we can't really get away from discussing it and those themes. So if any of that triggers you or upsets you or you just you know, don't want to hear it for whatever reason, I would suggest skipping this episode and moving on to our next one. In any case, I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. Yo. (laughs) Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds. Dory is a Star Trek novice, and we're going on a journey through Star Trek The Next Generation. Today, we are talking about episode one of season two, which is called The Child, the original air date... November 21st, 1988. And yeah, this episode is... Something. A, a doozy. Uh, it makes me furious. But we are going to start with a recap from Dory. Okay, hold on to your butts, because I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very mad. Okay. Big mad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so we start off on... Uh, oh, it looks like there was maybe a bigger budget at the beginning of the episode because mm-hmm. there's like the shuttle in like a room we haven't seen before. Okay, so like, I'll get into all that later. Obviously. <laughs> the, oh God. Okay. I'm sorry, so, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not a good intro uh, to season two. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So let's let's skip a little bit. Okay. First. There's obviously been some kind of time jump. Don't know how long, but enough time that Riker has a beard now. Mm-hmm. I'm undecided how I feel about it. This is also might be the the most times I've written in capital letters in my notes um, <laughs> of an episode ever. Because there's yeah. a I yeah lots of capital in my notes. This, I, this I episode. would just like to give you a little bit of heads up regarding the beard. It is noticeably not normally groomed in this episode and it will get a little smoother as time goes on yeah this this isn't this isn't the peak of his beard yet no th- <laughs> this is this is like beard alpha yeah okay all right i i still haven't decided if i like it just in general wes has a new outfit i guess he's like part of the crew now yeah that's his new permanent outfit yeah i it's okay it's fine i mean it's all gray <laughs> yep yeah um, I was really mad <laughs> that, uh, Dr. C was not in this. Yep. Uh, this better be temporary or else I'm going to throw, uh, something at, I, I'm mad. I, this better be temporary. Well, she's working at Starfleet Medical now. Yeah. I don't care where she's working. She better get her ass back to the ship and oh. be the awesome, awesome person. So uh, w- would you like us I, to, like actually tell you if this is temporary or not yes please yes okay this is temporary good but she won't be back this season (gasps) no yeah she does come back but the background (laughs) behind it is that supposedly she and maurice hurley did not uh really jive and he wasn't super interested in renewing her for the series so they asked her if she'd like to go and she was just like sure i guess fine so she left, and they replaced her with Diana Mold- uh, Moldar, who uh, is playing Dr. Pulaski, and she was a veteran of Star Trek. She had actually played two doctors on the original series. Yeah. So that means basically the equivalent of a real-life PhD. If sure. She's basically a real-life doctor. <laughs> sure. I mean, they were like one-episode doctors. Yeah, but if you play Dr. Sermon Otino on TV, they automatically give you your medical license (laughs) (laughs) i just assume (laughs) yeah okay so 
It also, see, I think jordy has been promoted to chief engineer. Mm-hmm. That's right. They finally have one. So good for Jordy. I'm very, very proud of Jordy. Good for him. Um, he, uh, okay, so we kind of reestablish most of our gang. And then there's like a star entity that's following the ship. And it busts into the room. <laughs> Of a man with a very hairy chest yeah. does nothing. It just lingers on this guy's hairy chest and then goes through into a room where initially we don't know whose it is. But this person has some interesting choices of a comforter uh, because that shit is shiny. <laughs> and it turns out it is Troy. Um <clears throat> <laughs> I'm so angry. Yeah. I, okay, so, but, like, the main... I'm going to touch really little on the, like, main plot of the thing because I don't I don't care about this section. Okay, basically, there's some kind of plague shit and, like, they need to pick up some specimens of the plasma plague to, like, bring it to another place to get them to do a vaccine. But we also learn at the end it might not actually help create a vaccine so like i mean fuck all of us right like what was the (laughs) point of this stupid ass thing oh but also there's like a specimen is growing and it's due to the other plot so that nobody cares about that shit other than there's the guy the medical officer guy whose name is hester delt who has the haircut and the mustache of robert redford in butch cassidy and the sundance (laughs) kid accurate (laughs) Hmm. <laughs> um, which is an interesting choice but yeah okay that section gone nobody cares now the main shit that i am above and beyond furious about so that like star thing has impregnated troy does she have a say about it absolutely not of course she doesn't because she's a woman mm-hmm. yeah so she's assaulted she has no consent of this situation. And then the men sit around a table and discuss her options without asking her what they should do. And I was like, I wrote out the entire conversation because I was so mad. She's looking at the fetus, the gross, ugly alien baby on the screen. Sorry, I can't. It, it looks like a gross alien baby thing. I think most babies look the same. They're just potatoes with arms and legs. When they're born, like, they're, they're not cute. Let's be honest. They're not cute. Agreed. You need to wait them to, like, they need to sort of come into themselves for them to be cute. And honestly, not all babies are cute. Just putting it out there. Um, and yeah, this. <laughs> anyways. So she decides to keep the baby. Despite everybody's thing of, oh, Worf thinks she should abort the baby for the safety of the ship and the crew. Um, Riker, it, it, I, I cannot t- explain how livid I was at his line yeah. where he goes, he, I, I can't, this honestly, I don't think I've ever been, there's been stuff I've been upset with and like, ugh, like whatever, frustrated. I have never been so mad while watching episode i he, Riker goes wharf you this is after he's like the baby should be ter- the fetus should be terminated Riker goes wharf you can't assume the intent was belligerent she was impregnated against her will yep. exactly fuck you Riker fuck you Riker mm-hmm. in this ep- fuck you fuck you if. honest i was so mad that everybody was having this conversation just about her in front of her and then she has the baby and on i will say the delivery scene was simultaneously very sweet and also the weirdest fucking delivery scene i've ever seen in my life (laughs) yeah because like everybody was there and i'm sorry like i do not want if i ever have kids there will be nobody in that room other than the doctor i don't want any because i also want to be 1950s drugged up if i ever have kids yeah. Like, I want it to be birthed and be like, oh, I have a child. I don't want pain. I'm bad with pain. But anyways, there are so many fucking people in that room. There was Worf and his two, the two other security guys, one of which is the hot guy from season one who's popped up a couple times. So, <laughs> hey, hey buddy. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> and yeah, Data's in there, which I, I liked the Data stuff with her. That was, that was sweet. Yeah. And then Riker just like standing creepy in the corner. <laughs> staring that man does not blink 
he never <laughs> blinks and i think that's why i like can't decide if i am attracted to him or not because he doesn't blink he looks like a husky half the time he's just staring at you mm-hmm. the blue eyes it's it's intense so she has a baby things uh, seem to go well she doesn't experience any pain so like i guess that's good and then like five seconds later her baby is like four years old and when picard goes to meet this kid and then this kid did some creepy ass kid shit and goes oh by the way the kid's name is ian and he goes please don't worry everything is okay and i was like um goodbye yeah that that is creepy as hell i was i was actually waiting for this episode to get way more sinister because i thought that's very creepy no it doesn't though the kid just gets older and or increments of four i guess because he goes from four years old to eight um he does get to play with some puppies which was cute as hell and troy bonds with this kid honestly i think she's gonna be she'll like be a real she's like a good mom Mm -hmm. it's actually really cute watching her like interact with this kid yeah also good casting this kid looks like he could be her kid oh yeah and then as it turns out as previously mentioned the that specimen thing was growing because it was like some kind of radiation the radiation was coming from ian the sun and so of course he's like oh i'm the problem here so i'm just gonna like you know disintegrate and turn back into like a ball of stars light whatever and say goodbye and peace out leaving deanna troy completely fucking traumatized of yeah. ha- the experience of getting pregnant having a child and then birthing it and then raising him in like what two three days like yep. that or two days that that is and then him fucking dying yeah I, I am so mad. Yeah, I am they, so mad with this episode. They put Troy through so much trauma for no fucking reason. That's exactly what I wrote in my notes. I was like, what was what was the point of this? I literally wrote, I hate this. Troy goes from trauma, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, what was the point? What was the point? And honestly, the fact like that they try to fucking justify this, they try to make it okay by going like oh, it didn't actually affect her body. Oh, she didn't go through pain. Oh, like, her body is the same as if she never had a baby. Like, it's fucking disgusting. It literally, like, I'm... It makes me so mad. And, sorry, go ahead. No, I completely agree. And and it's such, like, a... it's it's like I'm so angry that like it's so hard to just like articulate shit or it's just going to come yeah. out like verbal diarrhea style right now because like it's it it's so mad I'm so mad I everything about this And that just... that whole like that whole conference room scene where they talk about her like she's not fucking there no one asks her what she wants to do or how she's feeling or anything like no one gives a shit about Troy in this episode I totally understand that, like, they have to consider, like, the safety of the ship and they have to figure out what the hell is going on because someone raped their crew member, but they don't care about that aspect of it. Like, no one fucking asks her if she's okay. No one asks her what she wants to do. Nobody sits down and says, like, yo, are you okay with what's fucking happening right now? Yeah. She, they, they just carry on and, like, she, you just see her raising Ian for, like, a day. And that's it. And, it, I, like, my heart honestly breaks for this woman. Yeah. Because the, she's been assaulted. She's, th- this whole thing, none of this, not, she didn't ask for any of this. She didn't do anything anything Mm -hmm. and the justification was that uh, was that the thing told her oh it was curious so it wanted to experience what they experience from start to end and it's like that that is honestly i hope to never say this again while watching this but it is the laziest fucking piece of writing i have ever seen in my life and i am it it's it's the worst justification of anything ever Mm mm-hmm in in one of these if they i I can't i'm so angry if they'd actually like maybe explored the implications and like the the fact that like troy was fucking violated then maybe i wouldn't be so angry at this episode even though like the uh, rape always has to be a part of a woman's story for some reason or children must escape the rape gangs yeah, it, 
it's so it's so frustrating it that like we haven't had a Troy story in in a while I mean she did have a little bit in the ship and skin of evil but like Mm -hmm. we haven't had her she the last time we had like an episode that sort of focused on her was the episode when she was getting married Mm -hmm. yeah and that we go from her her story is going getting married to her being assaulted and having a child like why are those the stories for women yeah and then it i yeah and i i mean i couldn't give you spoilers but i fully warned you that you would be mad watching this episode yes. do you know what you know what gets me also mad is i feel like if dr crusher was there mm-hmm. all these boys would have been smacked in the face and kicked out yeah. I feel like she would have handled Dr. Crusher to me has just honestly, I think she's my favorite from the first yeah. season. She she does not give a shit and she just says her stuff. And I think this would have made her so mad. Yeah. Which is why I'm also mad that like she wasn't there because it she would have been she would honestly she would have been the person being like, this is fucked up. Yes. What the fuck? And she wasn't there. Pulaski seems way too cool about this, like way too chill about the situation. She's like, like, Troy walks into the sick bay and is like, oh, it, it's time to have the baby. And she's like, oh, you bet it's time. Let's get you to maternity. <laughs> and she's like all happy and stuff. That's like, no, this is, this is fucked up. Like, I, yeah. I know Troy wants to keep the baby and that's fine. But like, you're way too casual about this. Like, to me, it just that her attitude made me angry, too. Maybe you could justify it that she's, like, you know, trying to make the best of it, but I'm already so mad at the episode. <laughs> she, to me, I didn't get a good first impression of the new Doctor. Mm-hmm. First of all, because of this stuff. But then Data, the name thing, that yeah. got me pretty mad, too. She's literally racist against Data. I'm not going to lie. I found that really funny because you've made the Data Data mistake <laughs> Yeah, but that's because I truly, I'm not used to it. But also, it's not having the person tell me directly to correct myself. Yeah. And I also, so it's also, he's a TV character. Yeah. But I've also gotten it down. Yeah. I now know Data. But when she does it, he literally says to her, like, that's my, how you pronounce my name. And she goes, whatever, at the end of the scene. Yeah. She's like, what's the difference? And he, and uh, I I love that. That's my favorite bit from Data in this episode, but yeah, I just... Yeah, she's not off to a great start for me. No. <laughs> Bad first impression. <laughs> I'll also... I'll give one tiny sliver of credit to Picard, because when they're having that meeting... when oh, yeah. Yeah, when Deanna goes, you know, do what you gotta do, but I'm having this baby, and then Picard immediately goes, okay, so, conversation's over. You know, yeah. you've made your decision. I was really relieved he didn't join into this that yeah. conversation. I was like, you better not say a fucking word, buddy. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't. I was like, thank you. Oh, my God. And I totally forgot about the third plot that doesn't fucking matter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to listeners in general. I'm so you mad. You mean the third plot the that was the only I... redeeming part of the episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was nice. But I'm just so mad about the, like... Troy stuff that everything else with the episode like completely got pushed to the back. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Uh Wesley is ha- is supposed to be leaving the ship to go join his mom, but he doesn't want to. So he talks to Whoopi Goldberg. Yep. yep. <laughs> for, who's the bartender right. of the mm-hmm. bar yep. on the Enterprise? Yep. So like, okay. So new location. Uh new location like, and n- new reoccurring character Whoopi Goldberg is there for the rest of the series. Yep. Holy shit, yep. really? Yeah. Oh my god, I thought this was a one-off because it no. said guest nope. star. So, so yeah. oh my she, god, they, they she put... Whoopi Goldberg is in this show? Yeah, she, she's, not, she's, not like, she's not like a regular regular, but she does come back quite often. Holy shit, oh my god, okay, very cool. Yeah. There's a little bit of a story behind that. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, at, like at the time, was already famous, obviously, because this is the late 80s. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah, yeah. post-color purple. So. Yes, she was. Or she's friends with LeVar Burton. And she mm-hmm. really Aww. liked the show, and she was like, hey, I noticed one of your cast members left. Would you have room to take on another cast member? And so she told LeVar Burton to pass it on, which he did, and they did not call her. They were like, oh, my God. That's, that, that, Whoopi Goldberg doesn't want to be on our show. Come on. That's bullshit. So they, they literally <laughs> just didn't even believe it. Um. <laughs> she sent correspondence to them saying, hey, 
I mentioned to my friend LeVar Burton I was interested in being on the show, and they're just like, that's not Whoopi Goldberg. There's no fucking way. So she just <laughs> calls up the producers one day and says, wow. hi, this is Whoopi Goldberg. I want to be on the show. <laughs> so are you guys interested in that? Is there something you can do? <laughs> so, wow. yes. Um, she really fought to be on Star Trek, yeah. which is interesting. That's that's honestly freaking fantastic. Yeah. And it, and, it, and it makes me more comfortable because her character definitely falls into, like, the magical black person trope. Yeah. I was thinking about that yeah, a lot. Yeah, she, she did this. ask for it. Yeah. So, yeah. actually, uh, two things. <laughs> that's um, a bad phrase for this episode. Her her, her character <laughs> was, was based on and named after a prolific uh, bartender during the Prohibition era named Texas Guinan. <laughs> oh, cool. And uh, oh, okay. in addition to that, the reason that she had been following Star Trek at all is the entire motivation that she has attributed to getting into acting was seeing Nichelle Nichols on the original Star Trek and saying, you know what? Yeah. I'm good enough to be up there, too. I can do this. Yeah, I, rem- so nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember her talking about seeing seeing Lieutenant Uhura and her, like, I think I think the story goes that she like ran to her mom and goes like, "Look, look, there's a black lady on TV who isn't like a mammy." Yep. And like, yeah, that really inspired mm-hmm. her. Which is oh, which is interesting so because nice. uh Michelle Nichols, she wanted to I think she wanted to leave Star Trek. Yeah, she wasn't all that interested in doing it because as an acting role, like <laughs> but, there wasn't a lot for her to do. Yeah, but Martin Luther King Jr. convinced her to stay. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, that was at the height of the civil rights era. That's right. Like, the oh, the, the 60s civil rights era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is a, that is wild. Yeah. 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 Really, really big game of, uh, of of connections there. Jesus. I mean, although, I have to say, though, like, this is absolutely the perfect example of, like, why representation matters yes. in mm-hmm. TV yeah, and movies. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I quite like the character. I'm... You'll uh, get much better examples of her as we go forward, but she always plays yeah. this like kind of wise sage kind of bartender whose advice is it, it's it's always like off color advice. Like you don't really think it's good advice at first, and then and then you like sit there and think about it a little more, and you realize, oh shit, no, that's that makes a lot of sense, and it's really like down to earth. Yeah, mm-hmm. I actually there was a line that she had that's actually one of my favorites for the yeah. episode, but. Yeah, so, yeah, she, I, I like that stuff with her and Wesley. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. It did get sort of like pushed to the back of my that, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair point. That, much that's bigger why I, stuff happening. I was gonna say it's, I, it's too bad that the episode is what it is because you didn't even get to enjoy that uh, surprise Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I saw her name in the credits, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and I was yeah. like waiting for her to show up, and then when she did, I was like, "Whoopi, what?" Yeah. And I thought she was great and like that that's actually very awesome that she's shows back up. Mm-hmm. That's great. That actually like that's nice. I'm happy about that. Yeah. But yeah, it it sucks that it's her her nice plot line with Wes is sort of overshadowed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm also really happy though that Wes is staying. Yeah. I was it's weird that scene where they're talking like not when he's at the window but later on when he's at the bar. It it to me did it feel flirty it did it did feel flirty <laughs> yeah it was a little That's awkward exactly... <laughs> not on her part but on his part yeah it felt for like sure. he was flirting with her yeah and the thing is is like i i looked up how old will wheaton was because i'm like i don't know how kosher this oh, is oh he was like 16 he was 17 ah okay yeah so it's not great but it's one-sided so understandable that he yeah, has... she was pretty chill and if... he just yeah. also if you yeah. were in that position wouldn't you hit on whoopi goldberg I would definitely have a crush on Guinan, I think. I mean, I can't I can't blame him for having a crush on her. Yeah. <laughs> so the the background of this episode is a little bit weird. Yeah, I'm sorry. You've been trying to get to this, but we've been ranting. No, that's over. okay. I there's a lot to rant about in this episode and it's sad because the background of it kind of explains the position that the whole fucking episode took, which fucking sucks. Yeah. But remember how I mentioned last season they were having problems because of the writer strike? Yeah, Writer's yeah. Strike was six months long, and it started in 1988, mm. and it dug into a bunch of this season, and that's why the season is shorter. So oh, they had started production before the Writer's Strike was over. So they had you know people that weren't Guild 
writing these things. Maurice Hurley had to come in there and do some teleplay stuff that he didn't want to do at the time. There was, it was a bunch of like nobody's dealing with it, and they ran into some really bad ideas because of it. The script from this episode was not written for TNG, the original mm. script. Uh, it was written for the canceled Star Trek Phase Two, which eventually turned into the first film in the late 1970s. Oh. Uh, it was based around Maggie. Remember the bald character Ilea in that film? Oh yes. Uh, yeah, so yeah. she was supposed to be a regular on Phase Two. Uh, Dory, for the record, Star Trek Phase Two was going to be like a sequel to the original series ten years after the original series had been made, and they added some new characters and and uh, changed some cast members around. And it, that was going to be the original TNG, but uh, then they turned into making films instead. Oh, okay. Uh, the Ilea character was of a race that I don't think we've ever seen again called Deltons. And Deltons are extremely sexual, thanks Gene Runbury, to the point where they are like so sexually mature, is what they, they called it, that when they join Starfleet, they have to swear an oath of celibacy. Because they're too sexual for humans. So, uh, okay. yeah, very, very weird thing. So, Ilea being pregnant was supposed to be this, like, major irony of the story because she was the character that uh, that, that all of this happens to in, in uh, that episode. And the I feel like that's worse. Well, okay, so here's the other thing. <laughs> like, a character that's, like, okay, it, it, like, whether you're a virgin or not, or you're a celibate or not, like sexual assault is it's it's equally bad all over the place yes it was also right? written in 1977 but I, yeah but i also feel like making a character who is actively celibate have to go through this is like it just feels extra malicious <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair i mean i don't i don't know what the uh context of it in the original episode is because we've never seen that, that script. that's fair yeah. Okay, I know in their heads they weren't trying to be malicious, but like it is. Yes. <laughs> and a writer strike is not an excuse for a horrible rape story where people don't care about the victim. No. Well, also very different standards for that sort of thing, unfortunately. Yeah. So the entire character of Deanna Troy was actually very much based on what they originally wanted for Ilea. So Ilea mm, also had yeah, had like uh, what was it? She was called an Esper, which is like a weird name for like psychic people that they would use back in the in like sixties and seventies sci fi. Mm. Uh, I think they that's a cool word. I gotta admit. Yeah, yeah. I think they actually yeah, like did use too. it in one episode of the original series, but it wasn't a very good episode, so nobody remembers it. I'm kidding. It was actually a, a decent episode. It's it's well remembered. Anyway, so well, isn't there a literally an episode called The Empath? Yes, there is, but that one's a little bit different. I think um, mm. the the Esper thing I think had to do with the pilot, but I don't remember the exact details of it. But they're also not completely clear on what an Esper is. It's like, oh, they're kind of psychic, but they also have like psychic uh, or psychokinetic powers, and it's like, mm. can can you guys like pick a thing? That, that these people do because every time that they feature something like that they give them like different powers but they give it the same name I don't know it's strange anyway so yeah uh, Deanna Troy was based off of that and so that's why they did this whole thing to her because they're like well it's basically the same character yeah yeah good times <laughs> so let's do this shitty storyline to another character yes yes exactly that's like that's I mean they didn't have writers they didn't know what the fuck to do yeah and it's men. They probably didn't realize how horrible this was. It, yeah, it is men. And also with our, our modern lens, we're like, what the fuck? Well, if it makes you feel any it, better. It definitely like wasn't good back then either, no. but it's like extra horrifying now. If it makes you feel any better, uh, Marina Sirtis is very amused by the fact that her pregnancy belly was made with birdseed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. What? She just found that funny and has pointed it out a few times over the years. <laughs> I mean, they could have just used foam. She's like, she has a belly for like five seconds. Yep, I know. In this episode, apparently there's a bunch of cutscenes in the in the final episode too. So there's that. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. Dory, you were right about something. If we can like move off from the more depressing topic for a moment, they did have a bigger budget. They redid the carpet yeah. on the bridge. 
<laughs> they they redid uh, they actually replaced uh the captain's chair and they did some modifications to the two chairs next to it yeah they definitely wanted to show off that like like uh they have a fresh new look yes yeah oh, absolutely yeah. they also did some shots that i was like oh somebody's being fancy now yeah they had some fancy camera moves uh mr wharf has a new uh sash mm-hmm. yeah it's, in, it's mm-hmm. a nice and he's uh, in the yellow uniform now. yep yep uh his new sash is uh, apparently weighs about 20 pounds it's a metal one <laughs> Oh yep. boy. Hey, that's okay. It, it's Michael Dorn's a big strong guy. So, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. That's why they made him a Klingon. <laughs> One of the things that I found the most disappointing, and I pointed out uh, something along these lines uh, when we were going through season one, Jordy has now lost his sass. Um, you won't see yeah. that much from him anymore now that he's a more serious character what? and they're trying to make him less of like a junior officer type. No. Yeah. But I love the wooey. Yeah, you're yeah. not you're not really gonna get him letting his guard down to that level anymore. But they do something different with him instead, which I believe you'll enjoy. I hope yep. so. I like Jordy so much. <laughs> you will still like him. I think um Pulaski's uh not going to endear herself to you. I also doubt that she will. Pulaski was I don't know no, I didn't mention this in uh, previously. Pulaski was trying to be a throwback to the doctor from the original series who's kind of like he's like a crotchety douche wad um who's yeah he's like a crotchety southern doctor yeah yeah and so yeah. they were trying to kind of go or uh, trying to go for that with her and it obviously was not successful by the end mm-hmm. of the season apparently Diana Mulder really had no strong feelings one way or the other and the rest of the cast had no strong feelings uh, towards her or against her one way or the other either so she ended up parting ways oh good so yeah. you get her for this season and you don't even get a proper goodbye or or <laughs> ever a mention again like she never existed <laughs> which is pretty yeah. funny and the, the thing is is like they're trying to establish a mccoy spock dynamic with pulaski and data because dr mccoy his whole deal was that he like him and Spock were, like, frenemies. Yeah. And he'd, like... He was straight-up racist to Spock. Let's oh, yeah. not mince words about yep. it. He'd call, um... Like, he'd call him, like, a green-blooded half-breed and <laughs> shit like oh that. Like God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But this was the 60s, so it was in the name of, like, that's their friendly ribbing or whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. People don't even look at it now and say, like, oh, God, he was so racist. It's more like, oh, that was just what the mentality was. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. But they they were kind of like, it was one of those things where it's like, they hated each other, but, like, in secret. They, like, they actually were bros. They pined for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Forbidden love. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Oh, sorry. Not in secret, but like underneath it all, they're actually like bros, you know, <laughs> that that was kind of the dynamic, but it fails because Dr. McCoy, he doesn't like Spock's attitude and he doesn't like uh, Spock's cold logic and that kind of thing. And he like, yeah, he's a little racist, like, well, a lot racist against Vulcans, but he still kind of respected him as an officer and as like a sentient being dr pulaski yeah but dr pulaski is so condescending and so dismissive of data who is also like just practically not a smart move to have her like trying to dunk on a fan favorite yes yeah (laughs) like if dr mccoy was like uh hello there mr spoke and he's like actually my name's spock he wouldn't be like uh whatever who cares yeah (laughs) <laughs> like uh it makes because here's the thing i was never like as infuriated with dr pulaski like most people are but <sighs> she still makes me so mad as well she should she's condescending and dismissive for no reason and it's because she doesn't consider machines sentient obviously mm-hmm and it seems like a very opposing viewpoint for Star Trek, like a very not in line with its values. Yes. Yeah, I And agree. it's like, this is this is a main character we're supposed to agree with and follow and, like, care about. Yeah, that was not a good decision for them on any, no. on any front. And, I mean, they do go back on it a little bit 
as as the season mm-hmm. goes on, but they don't go back on it naturally. She just stops having those reactions with him and yeah. And and that's it. She doesn't like go out of her way to start arguing on his behalf instead. So it's not like it's a jan- a change of heart. It's just like Oh, okay, I guess you're a person now, whatever. Yeah. But we'll see it as we continue with the season. Dr. Crusher will be sorely missed (laughs) this season. I am... This is like the first time in a really long time that I actually watched the opening credits. Mm. So when her name didn't come up, I was like, excuse me? (laughs) Excuse me? Excuse me? (laughs) What's happening? There's my doctor. Yeah, I tried to warn you as best I could. Because, like, when I gave you the hint last time, I said we'd have to say goodbye to somebody. Oh, I didn't even remember that. I was actually trying to remember what the hint was, but I could not remember what it was. That's okay. It's probably better get a more raw reaction, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really sorry. I mean, if it, I don't know if it helps. We're all <laughs> equally as disappointed. <laughs> I mean, it is what it we is. We have lost two yeah. characters in the sake of just a few episodes. And women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now... Wasn't there, I, okay, wasn't there, like, accusations of, like, sexual harassment, too, from uh, from the actress that played Crusher? Yes, there are pretty bad ones. I don't recall the details, unfortunately. I'd Like, I'd have to look them up again. But the bigger ones come from DS9. The, the mm, accusations here, yes. uh, I believe, had more to do with the fact that she and Maurice Hurley j- just had no working relationship whatsoever, and he... Okay. He just flat out did not seem to like her. He had issues with a lot of people. He's a very blunt individual mm. who really doesn't want to, like, once once he's set, like, this is how we're doing things, he really doesn't want to hear your opinion on it. He doesn't give a shit. And he's going to tell you that, that, mm. well, that's great, but your opinion is valueless now. So let's move on. Okay, so it wasn't sexual harassment. It was just, like, really bad working relationship. Uh, as far as I recall, I could be wrong, though. Yeah, in terms of of specifically Doctor Crusher. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't listen to a lot of like Comic Con like like question periods that they do because half the time mm. are their questions that like I already know about just from knowing background of the series or their questions yeah. that are just so fucking basic that I just do not care and I don't really. There's also I can't watch that stuff because there's a lot of cringe. There is and that and I just don't really follow actors and actresses' lives all that much to begin with. I I don't really mm-hmm. care too much about it. I'm really interested when it comes to like the behind the scenes production. Yeah, I don't follow that stuff either, but I've just like. As an aspect of the behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I don't tend to follow like the Comic-Con kind of things because like you you get it in snippets, but you don't Mm -hmm. you don't really get like a full view of things. And there's tons of books that have been written about the production of Star Trek series. So like I can just go to those. I know, but I never mentioned Comic-Con stuff. I I, I know. I was just saying that that's where um, the, the sexual harassment accusations come from. Oh. Oh, okay. You didn't say that. Oh, okay. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. I, I was I was looking on it the other day because I was trying to find specifically Maurice Hurley uh, stuff. And unfortunately, very few videos of his are left on YouTube. And as I mentioned, he hasn't really talked about TNG very much. He mm. left on very bad terms that I don't know the details of. And yeah. <laughs> Hooray! All of this drama that we don't know the end of. We just know that he had a lot of problems with people, and when he left, more people were happy behind the scenes than people who were (laughs) sad. But yeah, when he left, he gave the reins of the show to Michael Piller. That's at the beginning Mm. of season three, and he requested the Gates McFadden come back. Oh, okay. Because he he liked her, and they didn't want to keep Diana Muldar anymore because she wasn't vibing with anyone. Yeah, because if, if they never brought Dr. Crusher back, then, like... Why have his or her son? Well, no, not that, but just, like, but Picard and Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jean-Luc and Beverly. Oh, also, we get to see Chief O'Brien properly. Oh, yeah. For the first time. As, as an actual transporter chief. Well, actually, they don't say transporter chief, oh, but... Oh, that, that's the guy who is with Data, right? Yeah, yeah. in the, yes, in the transporter room. I knew I recognized room. him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he becomes like an actual regular. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, okay, question. Answer. That is very, very minor compared to everything in this episode. What the fuck is a plasma plague? Oh, it's uh, techno babble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's two science words. Yeah, exactly. Also, another plague? Another yeah. virus? What? 
There's what? a lot of plagues in Star yeah. Trek. There's so many. There's so many. And what, like, a time for, like... Mm. <laughs> I feel like it's an easy plot line to do. And it doesn't help that we've been watching these episodes, like, so, During like, back to back and stuff. Yes. Uh, so we're we're seeing the pattern a lot clearer because we we don't have a week between each episode. I think it's also our current situation. Yeah. Yes. I think I probably would have noticed, haha, there's so many viruses, but I don't think it would have, like, uh, stuck with me as much mm-hmm. if we weren't in a pandemic. Well, I did mention yeah. how the Roddenberry <laughs> box kind of, like, locks people in to writing yeah. things a certain way. And, like, how many fucking conflicts can you come up with off the top of your head if you are limited to not writing human interaction being, like, negative in any way? Well, mm, there's viruses, and there's alien invasions, and that's all I can think of. <laughs> yeah, it all has to be external forces. Yeah, It's too bad we can't send them my list of uh, <laughs> predictions <laughs> to get some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like an Earth history convention. <laughs> or the Olympics. The Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see a Galactic Olympics. <laughs> it just like they, they talk about like, because prior to, oh God, I hate to talk about Prior to Yara's death, she was in like a martial arts uh, competition. Yeah. And then like previously at the episode, the, uh, the minuet with the the numbers oh, one. Yeah, yeah. They go to play the Parnassi Square? Oh, Parisi Square. Parisi Square. Yeah. And so we know that they're like, they do stuff. We know that they can like be physical and like some level of athletics. Mm-hmm. I mean, Data can lift Wesley. <laughs> we do hear about other competitions so, like, as the series goes on, but I don't think we ever really see them. Except for one point in Voyager where they go to the wrestling planet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A wrestling planet? Yes. Yeah, a, a planet where the primary interesting thing on that planet is wrestling, and everyone's into it. And, and the Rock they is go in down it. to the planet to watch it. What? Yes, and Dwayne the Rock what? Johnson is in an episode of Star yes. Trek. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. That's in Voyager. Yeah. <laughs> Holy. Oh, yeah. God. Okay. And I think that's, like, <sighs> mid to late Voyager. Yes, it is. Oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, it's bad. There bad. are lots of random guest stars that you're going to see over the mm-hmm. years that maybe they only play a, a cameo part. Maybe they're actually guest starring, but uh, you, you're going to recognize a few people. Yeah, I'm going to be hung up on this Dwayne The Rock Johnson appearance <laughs> for a really long time. I love him. Hey. Oh, and he has forehead prosthetics, too. He does. He does? Oh, my God. This yep. better be better than the Scorpion King situation. <laughs> hey, don't worry, Dory. Eventually, we'll get to the Stephen Hawking episode, and you can be happy. What? <laughs> There's a Stephen Hawking episode? Yeah. Can't tell you any yeah. more than that. Uh, okay. I might... But he's there. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm now, like, very interested in these, like, theme episodes. Or, I don't know, maybe not necessarily theme episodes, but, like gimmick episodes we'll say um <laughs> yeah or not uh, because the I, i'm just gonna be stuck on the Dwayne the rock johnson <laughs> is that's a fair wrestling plan i uh, Th- this is on the series voyager <laughs> which is very stupid yeah. yes <laughs> i and here's the thing i don't care really about wrestling mm-hmm. but i Dwayne the rock johnson <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, this is going to be in my brain for a while. <laughs> and in, like, the best way possible. Oh, my God. I wonder if I could find that on YouTube or something. Oh, for sure. Because we're probably not going to get to Voyager anytime soon. Or I don't no. even know if we're going to. I don't know. But I, am like, need to if see. If we make it through TNG, I think Jeff and I are probably agreed that we want to move to DS9. Yes. And then if we okay. get through that, maybe Voyager. Okay, so it's safe if I... Yes. Look up this one Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yes, <laughs> it is. I okay. Oh boy. Okay, I'm very excited. Probably oh just God. look and at I'm the s- scene, not the episode. Oh yeah, yeah. And now I'm like psyched to find out. Like we have Whoopi Goldberg. So like, who else the f- and Stephen Hawk? So who else fucking shows up on this show? <laughs> well, uh, like, young huh? Ashley Judd. Oh yeah, that's right. Young oh, Ashley Judd. Okay. Because the show becomes insanely popular. So there was definitely, like, some celebs who, like, were more than eager to do a cameo. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm just trying to think who was like popular at that time, and the only person that's coming in my head is Alan Thick. <laughs> I can't imagine he showed up in no uh, Star un- Trek. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. not. <laughs> Iggy Pop is in a DS9 episode. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's not so weird. Uh, Kelsey Grammer comes up in TNG. Oh yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. Yep. His part is oh, very shit. small. Oh. Yep. Wow. Also, a younger Femke Jensen. Oh, okay. I first I was like, who? Yep. Okay. Um. I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From um, X Men. Mm-hmm. And a very young Kirsten Dunst. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. This Because this is, I guess, around. Um, Little Women and uh, Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. Like early mm-hmm. 90s. I, I yeah. was supposed to, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Damn. Oh, I'm a fan of hers. I think she's very underrated. I suppose we should get to favorite moments or just anything that you want to touch on that we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> yeah, I know with I... this, you know, favorite b- besides the obvious, very bad, awful shit. Okay, I do have three things i liked Mm -hmm. about the episode the first one and most important those puppies those puppies (laughs) were so cute yeah they were so cute i i really want to play with puppies and a nice breath of relief in this episode for a moment yeah just puppies oh god they were so cute like ridiculously adorable the other thing i liked was um Whoopi Goldberg's line to for a second I couldn't remember Wes's name and I'm like who is he to shoot and I literally went oh, through Wellesley. <laughs> yeah, Wellesley. <laughs> Wellesley. <laughs> uh, I literally went through yeah Wellesley Wellesley I literally went through like a Rolodex in my head and I went it was <laughs> the names prior to remembering Wesley was Riker yeah, and Wellesley Ian. Crasher <laughs> Wellesley Crasher <laughs> that'd actually be kind of a good drag name <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Whoopi Goldberg's line when she's like, but sometimes the game is to know uh, when to consider yourself before others. Give yourself permission to be selfish. Yes. And it's like, so it's like actual good advice. Yeah, I yep. like that. And then the last thing I like <laughs> is at the end of the episode when they're like, okay, so Wesley's staying and who's going to like take care of him? Oh, yeah. And Riker's like, who's going to tuck him in at night? And then Worf's like, I'll take that responsibility. (laughs) (laughs) I just like, like, Riker just looks at him and Worf's like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) I I liked that a lot. Uh, But other than that. uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. (laughs) I, I think you are forgetting the most important part of the entire episode. And that is when Picard comes onto the bridge. Or sorry, Picard is stepping off the bridge just as Wesley is stepping onto the bridge. Wesley notices that Picard oh. is stepping back onto the turbo lift with him and does a 180 right there and steps right back on that with him. Whole, <laughs> that whole awkward it's elevator so awkward. ride is yeah. amazing. There's so much yes. silence and just weirdness. <laughs> and when like Picard tries to put some distance between him and Wesley and Wesley just like, you know, doesn't let him do it, <laughs> like walks yep. towards him. Yep. <laughs> I love it's like so that. Awkward. Yeah, that whole awkward elevator ride. I love. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. And like, okay, it makes me mad, but I do love that bit with Doctor Pulaski and Data about how to say his name because I like Data's line mm. because she's yes. like, "Oh, Data, can you like get me something?" And he's like, "Oh, my my name is pronounced Data," and she's like, "Oh, what's the difference?" And then he says, "One is my name. The other is not." <laughs> and then she does some like really annoying condescending shit after that yes yeah she says something about bruised feelings and she's like, and like oh no, it's his name. is there a circuit for bruised feelings like fuck yeah. off uh, it's his name he can correct her no it's yeah. his it's his name versus not his name yeah. get over it like i've had my name spelt wrong majority of my life and <laughs> It's, it's like not that really hard. annoying. It, yeah, but a lot of people spell my name with like an I at the end. Oh, or I have I that e. too. And so, like, the amount of times where like I have to correct people of like, it, and I, I don't have a weird name, but I feel yeah. bad for like the people who do have names that like maybe you're not used to hearing here as much that like 
people have to create nicknames or whatever because people won't put in the effort to learn somebody's names. Yeah. Like, we'll learn Leonardo DiCaprio. And, like, we'll learn, like, all these complicated actors and actresses and singers' names. We won't learn, like, a regular a person. Yeah. That we know in person. We won't learn <laughs> how to pronounce their names properly. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, if we can learn Saoirse Ronan, like, yeah. Jesus, we can learn other people's names, for fuck's sake. Especially names that are, like, in reality, not actually that hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's certain names, like, um, I, I, I can't think of, like, a direct example, but there's certain names where, like, people have had to shorten it, and I'm like, but your, your actual name is not hard. I have heard many of those. All right, so we should move on to predictions, then. Your first Ooh. prediction of season two. Actually, no, not actually. Because <laughs> you had one at the end of uh, the last episode. Our last... Your first prediction of season two, except for the previous prediction of season yes. two. <laughs> <laughs> but your first prediction in a- after watching season, uh, season two, after starting season two. Okay, so the next episode is called Where Silence Has Lease. Where Silence Has What? Lease. Lease. Lease? Yeah. Yeah, as in rent. What? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's it's a dumb name. <laughs> and so your hint is, is that we have a really cool sci-fi mystery, a really cool space mystery, with a very dumb conclusion. I already forgot the name of the episode other than the <laughs> least part. Where silence has lease. Mm-hmm. Where silence has lease. I... Okay, I'm no expert in grammar uh, or english in general but that sentence that title makes me so mad it doesn't sound right am i wrong yep, I agree. it just doesn't sound grammatically cor- correct i think it is technically but yeah it's it doesn't it just doesn't it sounds wrong in yeah. my ear balls um <laughs> i forgot what it's, <laughs> I remember what it's called they're drums um, eardrums yes or canal you could say ear canal I like ear balls, though. <laughs> yeah. I could have just said ears. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've got something. It's going to be pretty bad. Like the end of that episode. No, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> um, okay. So, obviously, silence. I'm going to say it's related, but who the fuck knows at this point? Titles sometimes have been very misleading. <laughs> Looking at you, Haven. <laughs> they never go there. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so maybe all of a sudden everything goes quiet and it's due to the space entity, but they've taken their like voices or something for something else. It's not just for lols. Their voices may be like power something else. Mm. So it's like a little mermaid where they get their voices stolen. Yeah. Okay. So there's an a space Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> how, okay let's just sit back how much time do we have to talk about the little mermaid i'm just gonna read the entire <laughs> the entire <laughs> plot of the little mermaid okay who would they all be obviously no i'm kidding i'm not gonna do that <laughs> can you imagine just assigning everybody the roles from the little yeah. mermaid <laughs> i mean i hate to do it but like Riker would obviously be eric yeah. the same hairstyle deanna would be ariel yeah yeah so like Little Mermaid style. Actually, no, Picard would be Ariel. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> Picard as a mermaid? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be in my script <laughs> when I write an episode. That's Riker's holodeck I'm just, program. <laughs> I'm just going to redo Little Mermaid with Star Trek characters. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. So their voices are being used to power something or they're being used for to feed an entity that it like does something Mm -hmm. and i think the like anticlimactic shitty ending is it like doesn't they think it's doing one thing but really it does nothing (laughs) (laughs) this is so bad this is so bad it makes it's it feels like I a Star Trek thing, I apologize to the Little though. Mermaid. <laughs> I apologize to the Little Mermaid and everybody associated with that. Um, but yeah, that's what I got right now. It's not great. But you know what? I've probably made worse predictions. You definitely have. <laughs> so I'll go just go with this because I have nothing better. All right. So if you want to see if Dory's right, 
watch along with see. us watch along with us <laughs> listen with us and join us next time on fully functional a tng podcast goodbye <laughs>